Hello, I'm Paul Beck with uh, Laboratory of Paleoclimatology, University of Ottawa. This is part two of um, basically of what happened during the at the end of the last ice age with the Younger Dryas. Um, so this is Younger Dryas cooling in January. This is the global circulation model. What it's showing is that there was a lot of um, a lot of call it a Heinrich event, H zero event, the Younger Dryas. Um, where you get the icebergs breaking off from the continent and from Greenland or, and or, and then it crosses the Atlantic, causes cooling, minus 20 degree cooling, rapid cooling over here. So then we, we went from a very warm period, you know, warming, strong warming, bowling, Allerod period at, at, at about 14,700 years ago, down to about, and then about 12,900 years ago, an event happened, there was lots of iceberg armadas crossing the Atlantic, depositing ice rafted debris rock, also etching the seafloor, which I'll show some um, papers on. Um, and that lasted till about 11,700 years ago, which then brought us into the Holocene, which is the existing warm period. So what happened down here? You'll notice there's cooling here. This is about three or four degrees cooling at these points. So the, the, the thought is that the rapid loss of glacial ice from the land raised the sea level rapidly. So that raised the sea level around Antarctica. It destabilized, it got rid of the ice shelves, destabilized the glacial ice in various regions. Um, and then, so there were icebergs that then broke off from Antarctica and they were carried. So they broke off from here and uh, the ones that broke off over here, um, the Ross Ice Shelf broke off. The icebergs piled up and cold water piled up against the Chilean coast right here, causing the cooling. The rest of these icebergs went through the Drake Passage, took the northward sea current, taking them to the Amazon estuary. The Ron Ice Shelf also disintegrated, the thought is, and it, the ice was then ported over and piled up against Australia. Um, and some ice, you know, that broke off, made it up to the Congo estuary. So in other words, both hemispheres are interacting with these so-called teleconnections. Um, the, 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 um, the vector being sea level rise, undercutting ice shelves. Okay. Okay, so this is just Ban Ki-moon talking about climate change. Like I say, this was from a few years ago. Um, and uh, we, we, you've probably heard of the Larsen uh, ice shelf collapse. So this is interesting. In 1995, 10 Argentinian soldiers witnessed a cataclysm that no other humans had ever seen, one that has since altered our understanding of climate change. So what Valley um, Albert Calio came up with with this article was that these um, these uh, soldiers were stationed on an island um, off the coast of Antarctica, 50 kilometers off the coast. It was surrounded by glacial ice covering 1,500 square kilometers, and then basically the ice was moving. There were gurgling sounds, sound like subway trains passing underneath, and then suddenly the whole thing bl blew. You know, basically the whole ice shelf broke up um, violently and they were worried about it taking the island with them, but the island held and they got off. So this was an amazing event, you know, the Larson A um, collapse, ice shelf collapse. This is just some more information on the collapse. Now, this is interesting here because this is the land, um, this is uh, what's happening off, this is the Davis Strait um, over here. So this is the water. Um, this is the fractured bedrock of the Melville Bay. Sea region is between the red bars to Melville Bay right here. So if you look at the, look at the um, fractured bedrock here, you can see it all broken up and fractured as compared to this here. So what clearly happened is there was a there was a um, there was some event here that happened in this region that didn't happen in this region, and it just changed the nature of the 
bedrock and caused all these fractures. You know, so these are all the fractured lines in the bedrock. Um, so th it's believed that um, this is where the this is the region where there was a rapid movement of ice, which did the fracturing of the the bedrock, which we think may have been the Younger Dryas, the H zero event. Okay, so this is uh, this is um, another view of it showing a close-up view, showing all of the fractures in this region. Certainly different from the region between the green lines. Okay, so now we come back to this, you know, the northern part of Greenland, and this shows these areas here, which are also possible areas where you could have lots of ice coming off, causing, you know, so large glaciers could be coming off here. Um, as, as, uh, as we get rapid warming, so say we lose Arctic sea ice and snow cover and Greenland starts warming like crazy, then these would be risk points of large calving events. And this is another view here where the Melville Bay area is here and there's no anchor point, so the ice could flow you know, quickly out of this region. It's a high probability um, you know, if it's going to flow off Greenland rapidly, causing rapid sea level rise, this is a region that is very suspect, plus some of those other regions in the north that I just showed you in a previous slide. Um, you know, as the ice is on the move, there's certain events happening. There's cavitation, plucking, and caulking. And uh, this, is an I this shows you some caulking. This is plucking. And uh, you can get cavitation events, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll explain what those are. So cavitation is you have the ice moving and the pressures can be changing. So you're going to have bubbles of bubbles in the water. And as the pressure increases, these bubbles can implode and they can cause pock marks in, and erode rock and things like that. Um, plucking is when you get, you know, the ice is moving and it's pulling boulders off. Those boulders are embedded in the ice. So as the ice is moving, it's scraping things. And as the ice melts, it deposits these, these boulders. Um, and you also have caulking where you have, uh, you have water coming, say, down a moulin and it starts spinning. And there's, there can be a rock at the bottom and the rock is just spun around and it etches a hole into the into the rock. So all of these are, these, these are all erosional processes that happen. And as the ice is carrying large rock and then it's floating across the Atlantic, it starts dropping these and we can detect these where the, the big rocks that have been dropped. We can also detect scouring if the ice is scouring the seafloor. Um, this is just uh, some more examples, some more details on cavitation, plucking, and caulking, caulking, caulking. So here's uh, here's where you know the we're, we're getting a spinning of the water. There's little rocks. You know you can find some of these, and you can still find a, a round rock. You know a spherical rock in the middle. Um, if somebody hasn't taken it, if it's large enough, and it's actually been moved around and etched the hole right through the rock. Um, so there's all these different erosional processes. You can also you know look at the colors of the ice and the properties of the ice and um, you know there's you can get lots of information from that for example white ice is compacted ancient snow that has still has 15 percent air bubbles in its volume you know the bluer ice has higher liquid content so here's an example of this is honeycombed ice or rotten ice or ice slush lacks internal strength acts as a lubricant can trigger a rapid collapse of a water-filled ice sheet. It's very fragile, over half of its volume might be meltwater. This is, uh, this is transparent blue ice. So if there's subglacial lakes that have refrozen, um, then that can uh, form that type of ice. And then you can have the opaque sort of blue ice. So water mixes with the drift snow. The more water that is in there, the bluer the ice can be. It looks beautiful. Um, you can also have ash if it was derived from um, volcanic eruptions. And this is, the, this is just showing what can be left of the rock. And this is a question. So where are you from? Melville Bay. Okay. Um, and you can get, this is an erratic that would be dropped and left. Um, not sure where this was. I think it's in Europe somewhere. 
and you can also have these very deep lakes from cavitation. So there's all of these different glacial features. So um, th these are some of the regions. This is just some of the regions that were cool during the Younger Dryas, and you can get evidence of ice rafted debris off of these regions. So, so uh, that's this presentation. Okay, now in terms of iceberg scouring, um, I'll just do a time check here. I've got about four or five minutes left. So, so basically, um, at the end of the last ice age, we had these giant icebergs moving across. Um, so this is West Greenland. The water's over a kilometer deep. So let's have a look at what happened. So this is a paper from uh, 2007, a cruise. And basically, remember the sea levels were lower by about 120 meters at the peak of the last ice age 21,000 years ago. Um, right now, no modern icebergs, including those from Antarctica, have drafts much in excess of 500 meters. Actually, this is about 700 meters in a more recent paper. Um, so we're getting scouring down to 1,100 meters of water depth. Take away 120, so that was about 980 meters of water depth. So the paleo iceberg keel depth was at least 950 meters. You know, add 10% onto that, and that because the 10% of that would be floating above the water. So we, we're having these huge uh, icebergs crossing the ocean, scouring the bedrock. So let's have a look at some of the data here. So this just shows this region of Greenland here, enlarged here. And what we can see is, you know, there's different ocean currents and there's scour marks that were measured. And that would have indicated the ice was moving this direction, scraping the seafloor. Okay, so the ice had ca come off of Greenland and crossed the bay the water here and scoured the bottom, probably got stuck for a while, then would there be more melting, eventually would float, thre uh, float free. So here's uh, some bathymetry, and this shows, this is a cross section, and it shows some scouring here, so sharp edges of the ice actually scour through, and you can see a different, the distance here, um, you know, these are actually can be quite deep and can extend for long distances. Um, and these are measured using uh, side scan sonar in general. Okay, so, so, this, is, uh, so this, this is quite interesting. So this cruise actually showed that you can have deep scouring of the seafloor. And this is uh, another paper. Uh, let me expand this. Okay, so this shows uh, you know, glacial North Atlantic Ocean. So this is plow, iceberg plow marks between 750 and 860 meters. So it's a similar study. And then it shows you know, different regions of the North Atlantic, Nordic Seas, and Arctic Ocean, you know, the depth of the deepest scour marks, side, sand, side scan sonar measured you know, going down to 1,100 meters here, um, depending on where you were. So this is, the, this is the Faroe Islands, the Iceland Faroe Ridge. This is a region that was examined here. These are the different, uh, you know, it was basically scanned by sonars. And again, we see these different, po different uh, pock marks and ridges on the ocean floor. So this is an interesting sonogram because you can see the shadows here of a ridge here. There's boulders here and the water is flowing. You can see the streams coming by and things like that. So we can learn a lot about what the ice was doing from those regions and also from the boulders that were there. And basically, uh, let's look at the last one here. Um, okay, so this is, the, this is a, a ridge um, near the Fram Strait, I believe, the, the Hovgard Ridge. And I'll just go to the figures. Yeah, so here's where we are. There's Svalbard, Greenland's over here, Deep Trench here, the Hovgard Ridge is here. You know, this is an expanded view, and there were scour marks from icebergs coming in all of these regions, um, causing, causing scour marks at those depths. Um, and basically, you know, there's some images here showing the scour marks. So, so basically, um, the ice is very powerful.